Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're joining us. Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Carol, and I'm here with my beautiful co-hosts, Greta, Kathleen, and of course, the Realm of Beings. I want to quickly put in that our next expo will be in California at the LAX Airport Hilton Hotel on Century Boulevard, L.A., we're going to be there from February 7th to February 9th. You should get your tickets online at www.consciouslifeexpo.com. Greta will be giving free psychic readings, and we will be broadcasting Shifting Impressions live with a special guest, Alan Steinfeld. We're very happy and excited to get him on the show again. So get your tickets early. And of course, you can always experience Shifting Impressions and the latest news including upcoming expos on our website, www.therealmofbeings.com, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Transformation Network, and any other of your favorite streaming platforms. Back to regular programming. We here at Shifting Impressions are very happy to be on Transformation Network every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. Listeners and viewers, if you're new to the podcast, thank you for joining us and being part of this wonderful experience. These conversations will help you to look at your life, your creation of reality, to see what you're creating, how it shows up, and how to help you gain perspective so you can learn how to shift what you're creating in order to create what you want. So welcome everyone to new listeners and viewers to the podcast. Each week, Greta is giving us a quote that she shares with us that she received from the realm of beings, which first we discuss with each other. And later on in the show, the realm will actually come and discuss the quote themselves. This week, we're talking about a topic that I think everyone relates to. Know your purpose in this life. The quote is, what is your purpose? It is to love yourself unconditionally and be one within. And quickly, the description was about focusing on the main question everybody seems to always ask. Why am I here and what is my purpose? And I think everyone has thought about, you know, should I be a teacher? Should I be a doctor? Should I be a lawyer? That's not really your main purpose. We are all sharing the same two lessons that are universal, and the main purpose is one, to love yourself unconditionally, and the second part, which is in the quote, to be one within and understand that every one of us and every species, we are all one energy known as the force. And if we can remember those two things and learn them in this reality, things will probably be a lot better for us when we transition into our next reality. <laughs> So, ladies, who wants to go first? We always send Kathy first. Yes, we do. Well, then, tis the season. Tis the season. <laughs> tis the season. And we're going to kick it off because I was looking, I was thinking about this quote. And it also says to love yourself unconditionally and to be one within. And um, this is the season when everyone is 
trying to spread joy, peace, and love to everyone else but themselves. Mm, they forget to do that to for themselves first, and they don't understand. Well, from my perspective, I mean, you know, um, they feel guilty, and they go out and they they splurge and they they overspend on their budgets, everything to show how much they love someone else, but not how much they love themselves. Because then you got to pay them bills. <laughs> January <laughs> until the following, until the following, you know. But even God rested when He built this, you know, the so-called. He rested, and even even all these people that are very religious and it's okay. Even Jesus said, "Rest a while. Let me rest. I'm going to rest." And it's important to um, love yourself as you love your neighbor. It says, "Love the neighbor as thyself." But just flip it. Say, "Love yourself." And then you can love your neighbor even more, you know? So exactly. that's my um, opening salvo. It's not Perfect. ungodly or selfish to take care of you first. I agree wholeheartedly. Greta? Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. Um, I want to say that, uh, remember, uh, you know, there are three gods, not just one that created this universe. Yeah. So That's it's true. a they, not a he. And um, uh, so it says, what is your purpose? Uh, we start that concept of purpose when we are in the incarnate stage. Now, what is the incarnate stage? The incarnate stage is that uh, space in which we decide we're given our lessons we accept the lessons and then we choose who our parents are going to be. And once we get here, we forget the purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have to start at every transitional portal trying to figure out what is my purpose? You know, your purpose in this reality in which you are present and which you are aware of. Some of us go into the belief of past lives and we think that, um, that we had a purpose there. But um, what the realm has taught us is that there's only the now. So there is no uh, past and there is no future to this uh, reality that we're experiencing. So we kind of forget that as well. There are a lot of things that we forget so that we can come in here and have a really interesting learning experience. Because that's what that's one of the things. So what is your purpose? I know the quote says, is to love yourself unconditionally and to be one within. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I agree with what Kathy says. We're always, uh, not always, let me get rid of that word always, mm. but we are sometimes looking at others and saying, I've got to, I've got to help that person, you know, to sometimes we want to help a person to our own detriment, mm -hmm. you know, so it's about purpose is to know that it's important for you to love yourself first. And in this podcast, we've been talking about, uh, this is our fourth year now, and we're still talking about love yourselves unconditionally. And we're going to continue that because that is one of the things that the force and others are pushing. You know, uh, like songs, people are writing songs about unconditional love, you know, and everybody, people, uh, ministers, rabbis, imams are uh, talking about unconditional love, you know, being in a state of unconditional love, uh, which can be challenging because mm -hmm. how can you um, be in a state of unconditional love and somebody's insulting you, you know? Uh, or you're in a situation where you, you say, well, why, why did I create to be with this person? You know, or when we're blaming somebody, you did this to me, or saying, 
I don't like you. You're a mean person or you're this. So we start to define that person. So when we're defining someone in a negative light, we are not practicing unconditional love. This is something we have to practice. True. And it can be challenging. Oh, yeah. Greta, when you were talking about your couple of things, both of you said that I just like to maybe throw my little two cents in. Greta, when you're talking about how in the incarnate stage, as we choose our parents, for listeners that may not be aware of what that means, that is part of the how we're going to learn the lessons we agree to learn. So in case anybody's wondering why do we choose our parents, there are various characteristics, the genetics, the epigenetics, and that is our choice uh, when we are coming into this reality. And I think that the major purpose is for us to remember, because before we got here, we knew. And once we were born, we forgot. So the major, really, the main purpose for us is to remember who and what we are the force and that we love unconditionally and we're all one. And Kathy, you were talking about like the gift giving and all that stuff and how we can feel guilty about if we're not giving. And I don't know if anyone else has noticed um, this time of the year, especially all the commercials that break your heart, the people who are hungry and homeless, the pets or the animals that are abandoned. I mean, you know, the children that are sick and they get you like by the heart and all you need is to donate $19 a month. It used to be 11 a month. It's slowly inflation is making it go up. Now it's up to $19 a month and you, you do, you want, but how much can you contribute and give as donation without, you know, if you're, if you yourself are limited in your budget, you know, so you have to not feel guilty and understand that those people, as sorry as we might feel for them, and I know we're not supposed to express sorrow, but they have chosen that reality to experience. And I know it's easier for me to accept that when I remember, you know, because with me, I cry on every one of those commercials. There's some of them I have to change the channel because I can't bear watching it, but I do stop myself feeling sympathy and I try to stay with an empathy and say those people created it. So but there but there also just to piggyback there are other people and this is kind of a little low vibration way of looking at it that prey on um people that uh are inclined to think that it is ungodly and selfish to mm -hmm. do for yourself first. And they fall prey to uh, uh, people and I mean I know some people that have given everything to a certain um, individual that that that's in, in you know that's a, a leader in in the, in the church community and I'm not that's saying how it's cults everyone. are formed, Kathy. That's how but, those you know, cults happened. Well, but it's it's just that it's okay if you want to tie, then you want to give to support uh, your your house of worship or whatever religion you have. Uh, but but. Um, it's okay to give to yourself first to make sure that right. that giving that you're giving is not uh, because they're gonna they're they're gonna have, you know, you. There are some churches that you know really use the funds and other organizations that really use the funds the way they're supposed to. And I'm not saying don't give to them if you have it, give it, Carol, like you said. But give exactly. it within not out of sympathy. Give it because you want to really. Uh, uh, you're helping them, but you help help yourself first. Exactly. Uh, it's okay. Don't get it's 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 so it's okay to love yourself unconditionally. But a lot of people use the word I've noticed, Greta, just to piggyback on what you're saying, but they really don't understand what it really means to even love someone unconditionally. It's like become the new catchphrase. Oh, I love myself unconditionally. Do you even know what that even means to when you say that? Or and to love people someone always else, like, conditions. Please. You know, in my, I know there's no past, but in my experiences, let's put it that way, I had many relationships and I know I created these and I used to call it the I love you but syndrome. It was people telling me, I love you but 
if only you were taller. I love you, but, you know, I loved so-and-so more. And I actually had numerous, really, I kept looping of getting that I love you, but syndrome. And having a but is not unconditional. It means you're putting conditions on someone. I love you, but you need to dress a certain way. You need to behave a certain way. Those are conditions. We can't do that. You have to accept each person who is the force and we're all one, but they're a different personality and it may not be one you like or want to be, but you still have to not judge. And that's right. hard. That's hard. Right. <laughs> but see, but that's where loving unconditionally and knowing mm -hmm. your purpose is to love yourself unconditionally, because when you love yourself unconditionally, then it's okay if someone else chose a different set of parents that don't look okay. like you, that are not of the same ethnicity as you or have the same religious beliefs or social uh, moorings as you do. Um, because when you're loving yourself and you're not, um, and you I would say like um, guarding your heart and uh, walking in wisdom and not letting anyone make you a crutch where they break you. You know, it, to me, it just, that's something else that I think should be discussed or thought about by the audience and, and myself included, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's because when you don't, you bring on anxiety, you bring on depression, you bring on uh, 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 jealousy, you bring on a whole lot of low vibrational emotions mm -hmm. and thoughts. Exactly. Into your into your into your beingness that you don't really want to experience, you know. Yeah. So to right. me, part of loving this, and I'm gonna turn it over to Greta because I know she, I feel she has something to say. Yeah, it's, you know, it's 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 that's just that's my second salvo, my second uh, 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 charge. Go ahead, Greta. No, I was just gonna say that um, going along with what both of you have said. Uh, people have said, told me that to love yourself is selfish. You know, I've actually had people tell me that. Oh, I can't. Well, a lot of us that. were trained as children that way to think that. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, I've, I've told the story about my daughter. I, I'm going to tell it again for those people that didn't hear it. You know, she came home when she was in high school. Of course, she's uh, an adult in her 30s now. But she came home about when she was about 14 years old. And she told me, she says, you know, Ma, uh, you taught me that I have to love everybody unconditionally. And I said, oh, yes, you do, Kai. And so then she said to me, but do I have to like them? <laughs> you know, and I told her, I said, no, you don't. I mean, that was one child that was so happy, you know, that oh, that made such an impact to me when you told me that it made it much easier for me when you said yeah. you have to love them, but you don't have to actually like them. <laughs> no, no, because there's because yeah. you know what it is we're, when we're doing that, we're looking at the personality of the individual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everybody's here supporting we're supporting each other. That's another purpose. We're supporting each other in learning lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, when you it's get married, to, yeah. yeah, when you get married to somebody or you couple with someone, um, you know, re regardless of their sexual orientation, but you couple there, you're coupling because there are lessons there to learn, you know, and, and this is the thing. Uh, this space or this reality is all about learning lessons and the personalities. I mean, there's some personalities. Let's just be real about it. Uh, that we we wonder, you know, what the heck? Where did they come from? You know, and that you know, and in that saying, where did they come from? There's that. That's there's that slight thing of judgment in there right right it's that slight thing of judgment we gotta uh you know we look at look at that person or how look at how that person is dressed you know Greta, question if you don't mind i know we're not supposed to judge but let's face it it's so easy to do that and it's so difficult to not do that how do we train ourselves to not judge others. 
Well, you don't want to judge because, Carol, um, in order to judge, you've got to go inside yourself, come out with what your perceptions are. Mm -hmm. It is where the personality gets in there. The, the per perception, it's my perception within me. So when I judge you, who's the first person I'm judging? It's myself. Yourself. Mm -hmm. Anytime, anytime you speak, even if you speak and say, this is a beautiful person, you know, then that's because you see yourself as beautiful. I was speaking to a woman this morning and she says, I can't identify when people are liars. I said, of course not. Of course you can't identify somebody being a liar because you aren't. You know, a liar knows a liar. A thief knows a thief. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I had one lady once a while, oh, many years ago, who told me, she said, um, Greta, I don't I don't see anything wrong with anybody. I said, Well, that's that's a good thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And she thought it was a bad thing that she couldn't see the quote unquote badness in somebody else. She saw all she just saw goodness of people. That's all she, even if somebody was doing something heinous, that there was a belief that deep down inside that person, there is something good, which is true. That's wonderful. She's lucky. Right. You know, I told her, I said, well, that's amazing. Of course, that's the only person that ever said that to me over these 40 years. But, um, you know, the thing is, there's so much we forget on purpose, it's pulled from us on purpose so that we can come into this space and work on the lessons that we agreed and committed ourselves uh, to learning. And unconditional, we've talked about unconditional love. We've said, one, uh, you know, we can go over the aspects of that again. Most people feel that unconditional love means that you accept the realities or the experiences that someone else has chosen. And that's okay. Yeah, that's part of it. You know, if you go online and you'd say, okay, what does unconditional love mean? They're going to give you some semblance of that. Yep, they sure But will. they're not going to tell you the rest. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you that in unconditional love, you see that person as you. And you see yourself as the person. You see, that that's the, now we're getting into unconditional love. Because you're me and I'm you. So if you're me and I'm you, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to blame. Because when I'm doing that, I'm talking about myself. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that sometimes scares me because it is difficult for me to not have impulsive judgments of others, but they're always followed by the understanding that that means that's what I have in me. So if it's something I don't like about someone else, it means it's something I don't like about me. And that's scary. Well, you know what? And to pick, just to kick it up with a different little way um when we talk about differences and when i spoke before about when you love yourself unconditionally that means you love everyone else unconditionally you you respect and honor their differences i mean you know everyone's talking about even alan making contact with other individuals that are non-human and if you can't even love a a, a person another human that is that is ethnically or looks different from you or thinks differently from you, then how are you going to do that? So maybe we're practicing here how to do that. And I think some of us are getting it, but some of us, let's face it, uh, I don't want to judge, uh, uh, need to keep practicing that is the better way so of saying that. A little slower, Kathy. <laughs> well, well, you know, but I mean, but we slide back and forth. And it's, and, and you know, like, like we have that twin that Greta, 
taught us about, you know, you have your your low vibrational thought side, your emotional side, and your high vibration. And you have to decide which side do you want to be on, which one makes you happy. Some people like to stay on the lower side and, and judge all the time. And that's what makes them happy. I decide I don't like that. Uh, sometimes it's like, oh, I think I want to go a little low vibrational with that personality over there because I don't like what they did or what they said. But then I, you know, oh, it takes so much. Oh, God, I just, it oh, does. it makes me want to explode inside. And then I just go, it's you know. a lot of angst sometimes. Just, just a lot of angst. I'll, I'll QDR that later, but I'm going to say what I got to say. I'm a QDR <laughs> that. But, um, you know, the other word. Yeah, that, I love you so much. I really I do. But Carol, another word that people have picked up on is projection. And that's mm. the one thing we learn from the person that's going to occupy the big house again. Uh, everyone now knows what a projection looks like. And we, we started out with this and Greta with this show talking about uh, you're projecting that you seeing yourself. Uh, I don't think they realized or recognized that, but they were saying that in reference to that person he's projecting. But in order for you to recognize that he's projecting, you have to know that you do it too. You have just like you have to recognize, mm -hmm. which is more like the oneness that we're talking about. We are so alike because we're all humans. We're all human, human yes. beings on this planet. We're all the same species. The same species. So naturally, we have the same abilities, and naturally, that naturally, yes. we have all of these same freaking lessons. We're just learning them differently at a different pace. Some of us have to keep you know, putting that. Some up. people it's have it's different it's lessons it's too. I, I think the two in our quote about unconditional love of self and oneness, I think those are universal to everyone, every all species. All species, all species. Right. But I also know, and Greta's taught me from when I've had issues or challenges, let's say, with others, and I was comparing myself, and she would say to me, yes, but you don't know what her lessons are. Hello. And that makes a big difference. And she also pointed out to me lessons I have learned, things that I have accomplished that I don't give myself credit for. Hello. And that is, Greta, I have to thank you over and over again because that helps Hello. me so much. But who right? created to get who created to learn that, Carol? I I did. It's just amazing the way I created to meet Greta in the first place. It was so happenstance and it was such perfect timing that, you know, and here I am eight years later and I'm doing a podcast with her. It's well, like, I think I'm one of my 13. Relief. Well, Spark turns 11 on Saturday, my dog. Well, happy birthday, Spark. So Eddie died 11 years ago, but Greta knew Eddie for three or four years. So. Oh, I'm not so not good at math. Oh my God. How many years is that? 14. 15. 15. Oh, there you go. 15. Something, something like that. Yeah. And I met her happenstance too because she uh, sent the uh, aspect of herself in my house to deal with some stuff <laughs> that I created. <laughs> Nobody oh, could say your life is boring, Kathy. That's for sure. Well, yours either, Carol. And certainly not yeah, great. I, I, I've had adventures when I was younger. We all have adventures. I'm, Go ahead, I'm learning. Carol. I think the the more I learn, I feel like the less I've learned. <laughs> I think I knew more when I was younger. The more I'm learning, the more it seems like I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense at all. It does, yeah, but it I does. think it's on a, it, it moving deeper into yourself, and so therefore you're starting over again, and and yeah. because you because with a whole different thought process attitude and attitude you yeah. got to take us to break carol yes we do greta we will see you at the end of the show audience we are going to take a short break and when we return we will be discussing this quote with the realm themselves we ask you to stick with us we'll be right back Welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us. Again, this is Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. We are at that point in the program where the realm will come through Greta and discuss the quote they gave with us. So welcome, realm. 
Howdy do. How are you? We're doing fine. Thank you. Wonderful. We're doing fine. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking about, I think, a very important quote this, this week. The quote you gave is, what is your purpose? It is to love yourself unconditionally and be one within. And I know, Realm, that you mention this literally every single broadcast. So do you want to expand on this week's quote, please? Yes, we don't mind doing that. Uh, I think the wonderful word that's in there that we need to explore, that we want to explore, is purpose. Mm. What's a purpose? What, what does that mean? Can one of you ladies expound on that? What is purpose? To me, I look at it as a reason. Um, something that, wow, it's hard to define something without a dictionary. Purpose is usually what something is a reason to have, to use, like, um, I don't know, Dawn's purpose is to clean your dishes. Does that make sense? Something the you have to do. The reason, you you, to do. reason you do something. Like, that's my impression. So yours is, uh, it's a reason. Purpose is a reason for doing something, right? Yeah, yes. Yes, Realm. Okay. Kathleen, you're on. What is a purpose to you? A purpose to me, I think it is nuanced. I think it, um, uh, I, for me, it all depends on how you interpret. I, I can have more than one purpose in my life. You know, the purpose of having a child is to allow another individual to come forth and um, <laughs> experience uh, this experiential learning journey that we're all on. I'm really getting kind of deep here. But another purpose, like Carol said, is a reason to do something. But sometimes the purpose can be driven. You can have a purpose-driven life if you so choose. But how you choose to do that, or how to choose to create that life through whatever purpose you want, I think it's. I think it means a different thing for different people in different. That okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, situations. That's kind of like how I see it. What is my purpose? I know our purpose from you realm is to love ourselves unconditionally, and to be quite honest with you, that's a that's that's a hell of a mandate, and it's taking up a lot of my darn time. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's uh. It's an ongoing thing. A purpose is ongoing to me. It doesn't end. It does. Washing the dishes can end for me. I'll just buy paper plates. <laughs> <laughs> Realm, what would you define purpose as? Yeah. I think one thing that's come out in the discussion that both of you have had in your contributions is that there are so many purposes. So, but the main purpose, what is the main purpose? purpose. Because when you understand that unconditional love of self is the main purpose, then you're going to understand that through that, you create your reality. And we sense. have given you the existence protocol called create, support, support, create. A person, another person is going to support you where you are at. So if you are not loving yourself, then other people, other individuals, even your animals will support you, showing you that you don't love yourself that particular moment or that day. You know, so you can weave out of unconditional love of self to know I don't love myself today. So what the thing to do, what you want, what we suggest is for you to remain stable with it. Stay grounded yeah. in it. 
and practice constant yes. practice and practice it because it's you've been taught many 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 individuals have been taught uh through challenges that uh could be considered a lot of angst you see so they uh they're filled with not love of self but that they created to experience that so you create to experience it and now the really wonderful experience is to stop it <laughs> you see you created it you're challenging yourselves is what you're doing you're challenging yourselves to see am i really worthy of myself not only am I worthy of myself, but am I worthy to myself? You're testing yourselves at every moment in this experience. And you're testing yourself in, how much do I love myself? If you get accolades for something that you've done, that's showing you that you love yourself. If somebody's coming to kick the crap out of you, that ought to be the signal that you don't love yourself. That's an obvious one, yeah. Right. So you're getting experiences over and over and over again, testing yourself. How much do you love yourself? It's not about selfishness. In fact, that's a lesson unto itself. Mm -hmm. To learn that to love yourself is not being selfish. If you don't appreciate yourself, who is? If you don't feel that you're worthy to be appreciated, if you don't feel that you can love yourself the way you have created yourself to be, please note what I have said. The way you have created yourself to be. Because you've created your body, You've brought in your thoughts, your emotions, your experiences. This is all about you. Your personality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So why not be in love with you? Kathy, you gave uh, the thing of the uh, a small talk on, you know, how people go out during the holidays and they're buying presents for everybody else. You know, and I wonder how many people have brought a present for themselves. You know, it's wonderful to be a giver. There's nothing wrong with that. And that does feel good, too, I have to admit. Absolutely. I always when, that, when you give something, that person says, oh, thank you so much. But that means that you're coming from a state of wanting to help somebody, wanting to help somebody feel good. Right. You see, right. you give a gift of something to somebody that you think you're going, to, that they're going to like it. You don't give them a gift that you're giving it to them so they hate it. You're giving well, them a she... gift that you want them to like. Right. And when you give them that gift and they tell you, oh, thank you so much, then you know you have helped them to have well, inside themselves appreciation and when they appreciate you guess who else they're appreciating themselves absolutely because we are one so what you appreciate with one person note that there's an appreciation of that internally of in yourself for yourself Realm, quick question, please. When, you know, there's the expression, it's better to give than receive. Everyone has heard that. I know that in my experiences, um, there have been times where I've given gifts to people, not because I was trying to save them or trying to make them feel good, but just something I wanted to do for them out of, you know, a high vibrational emotion. But at the same time, 
I was giving it to myself because I would feel good about it. Their appreciation of it was actually beneficial to me, making me feel good. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm really. Absolutely. There's nothing right? wrong with giving something to somebody and you feel good about giving. There's nothing wrong with that. If they give you accolades and you were giving it, you are helping. Right. If they tell you and say, oh, this is so ugly that you gave this to me, you know, then that meant you were, you went into saviorhood when you went to give it. Mm. And saviorhood is definitely the opposite of loving yourself. Right. Because saviorhood, trying to save somebody, you're setting yourself up to be punished. Because we've talked about this, that when you try and save somebody, you're going to make yourself a victim. And what does a victim? A victim receives some type of punishment. So that's what you're setting yourselves up for. You don't want to do that. You want to uh, give by seeing yourself helping. And there's a fine line there. There's a fine line. But loving yourself unconditionally will keep you out of saviorhood. You see, unconditional love is extremely important. It's important for you to love yourselves first. You know, when, uh, when you get on an airplane and they put you, the stewardess or steward, stands in front and they run you through that whole thing about putting on the, the uh, what are those little things? Water, water. Oxygen life, mask. My fest. Yeah. And, uh, and your oxygen mask. What do they tell you? Who do you take yourself. care of? Do you, you. yourself first? Absolutely. And then attend to your child or whomever. Uh, that's right. You yeah. take care of yourself first. Because you can't help anyone else if you don't love yourself. You can't love anyone else, right? Absolutely. Because the first part of loving is loving you. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you don't love yourself, that is so deeply ingrained inside of you that you cannot see a love of someone else. That means you cannot really receive unconditional love from someone else. That's true. You're blocking yourself. See, not loving yourself is blocking. It's a blockage. It's not selfish. It's a blockage. You're blocking yourself from all the wonderful things that you could experience in high vibrational frequency. And you've decided to yield. There, uh, uh, um, there are People in families where they want to, they sacrifice themselves and then they complain about, well, look what the person did. My sister didn't, my sister has been mean to me. She has not helped me do what I need to do. That's, but I did this for her. Yeah, whoop de do, you did it for her, but look what she did to you. You know, let me not, and we're going to change that what she did to you, what she did for you. And you when we're supporting it. somebody, we are doing something for them to assist them in their lessons. Mm -hmm. Carol, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just saying that the whether you're saying what they did to me or for me or for them, you're creating all of it anyway. So you have to always remember that. And I know a lot of times when I get off track, let's, let's call it, um, that's what brings me back on the tracks is just to remember that I have to love myself. I'm the one creating my reality. I have control. And I wasn't taught that through my life. That's something I've learned through you and through Greta and the rest of our family. So it's important for everyone to really accept that you can love yourself unconditionally. I do have a quick question, though, because 
you we we use the word selfish because a lot of us were brought up thinking that way and a lot of other people that do not understand creation of reality and unconditional love of self might still feel that that that's being selfish how would we define selfish that differentiates it from unconditional love of self being selfish hmm is there That's such an a interesting phenomenon because we could it, it's I'm going to call it a phenomenon being mm -hmm. selfish, you know, uh, that's uh, looking at yourself and saying that you don't believe that you can help somebody. See, you can help somebody. But the one person you want to help first is you, just like it, they tell you on the airplane. Put the oxygen mass on you first. So you want to put that oxygen mask on you first. And what you're really doing is putting unconditional love inside of yourself. And, and let me say this, it's not putting it inside of yourself. It's recognizing that you have it. Mm. See, everyone has the capacity for unconditional love. Everybody. I don't care what their personality is showing you at the moment. Everyone has the capacity for unconditional love. Now, what happens? You can choose if you want to keep it or not. And let me clarify that when I say keep it or not, I mean to use it or not use it, to use it as part of your life. It's to, it's to bring it, it's to be a part of it, it's to understand that you are unconditional love. So why not be that? Why not have that in your experience? If it's like putting on uh, some type of outfit, everybody has different outfits that they like. Even when you're, even if you're staying in a, have decided to create a homeless state, there's some clothing that you prefer over others, and you want to wear those clothing. So. If you're wearing those clothings, think of wearing unconditional love energy. Mm. Put it over like you. You know, you have that story with the emperor and the uh, the clothes. The emperor no clothes. <laughs> right. And he believed he had a beautiful garment on. And in the story, he walks through the streets totally naked. <laughs> But to him, he is clothed in the most beautiful outfit. The most beautiful outfit. And everybody's looking at him as if to say, what is in the heck is wrong with him? You know, parents closing off children's eyes, you know, things so they can't see this man. But he believed it. So notice in the story, he feels great because he believes in it. So you want to take on unconditional love and believe in it. Wear it. Wear it. But it's going to be opposite to the emperor and his clothes. Because the people that looked at the emperor could see no clothes. But when you are wearing the energy of unconditional love, others may not see that energy, but they're going to feel that energy around you. Correct, right. That makes perfect sense. You see, they're going to feel it. You see. So it's kind of similar to the emperor with his new wonderful clothes on. 
you know, you can't see the unconditional love, but you can feel it. And it's going to set up different feelings and creations of realities for yourself. Because see, if there's a person that you're having a challenge with, or you're having angst with, the idea is that you usually look at the person. Stop looking at the person. Look at yourself. And look at yourself. When you change you, when you love you, that person that was doing all kinds of terrible things to you has got to change. They have to support to you. you. For you. They're not going to change change now, but they must change for you because now you are loving you. And they and must not just it. loving, but loving yourself unconditionally. There's no then there's nothing that you can create that's going to cause you not to love yourself. If you stub your toe, if you have some quote unquote debilitating disease that you've created to experience. Still love yourself unconditionally because that is also support of healing as well. Unconditional love does many things, many things. It makes you feel good. It makes you stay in, in more healthy condition. And when we say healthy condition, it helps you to stay in a healthy condition mentally, physically, Emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, and spiritually. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an elixir. Oh wow, I love that word. And on that note, uh, Carol, I do have to say, next week, tune in, viewers. Uh, excuse me, realm. Uh, to break free from your fears and these fears that you know about loving yourself might be one of them. It's okay to love yourself. I'm looking forward to that next week. Realm, as usual, we thank you so much for your presence and for sharing your wisdom, but we will ask you to bring Greta back. Goodbye, ladies. It was nice <laughs> being with you. I do, and it's always a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> but now to the audience, I say adieu. And please remember... A suggestion, which is to love yourselves unconditionally. Thank you and goodbye, ladies. Thank you. We'd like to take a moment to thank everyone. Kathleen, Greta, The Realm, Transformation Network. And most importantly, we'd like to thank you, the audience. Until we create each other again next week. Love yourself unconditionally, and we'll see you then. Bye. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with the Realm and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.